Hi, my name is Codley. And I'm Rossik. And we're both engineers on the Android Auto team, here to talk to you about what's new for app developers and Android Auto. Now, we're incredibly excited at Google about the automotive space right now, because we see it going through a huge transformation in connectivity, electrification, interfaces and sensors, sharing, and autonomy. Cars are rapidly turning into full-blown computers on wheels. They've got high-speed mobile connections, cameras, microphones, and screens of all shapes and sizes everywhere. Android Auto is an effort from Google and our automotive partners to bring these advances together and create a safe and seamless ex connected experience for drivers everywhere. Of course, that's easier said than done. There are dozens of different car platforms today, many different input types, from touch screens to touch pads to rotary controllers, many different screen shapes, sizes, and resolutions. Today, you can see that vision at work in any Android Auto compatible car. Drivers have access to their favorite apps right from their car's display, and developers build their app once without worrying about different makes and models, input controls, and screens. Today, we'll talk about two of the most important app categories, messaging and media. Great. So first up is messaging. Messaging has come a long way in both Android Auto and Android the OS. When Android Auto started supporting messaging, there wasn't really a good way for messaging apps to get their messaging information over to the car. That's where Car Extender came into play. Car Extender allowed a way for messaging apps to provide conversation details and a way to reply to conversations to Android Auto. But since Android N, apps could stylize their notifications with something called messaging style. Messaging style is a huge step up from Car Extender as it allows messaging apps to provide conversation information directly into the notification. Not only does it provide a nicer UI for conversation details, but it provides affordances like replying and liking directly in line to the notification. Android Auto now fully supports the use of messaging style and actions without the need for car extender. This also means Android Auto and the Assistant both fully support group messaging. So for the price of implementing messaging style, apps not only gain a richer mobile user experience, but also gain the benefit of automotive support. So let's see how Android Auto interfaces with, these, with this, starting on the messaging app side. From Android Auto's point of view, messaging apps have three core functions, notifying users of messages, marking those messages as read, and replying to those messages. Working backwards, apps can implement reading and replying with services. These services can be triggered internally with intents or externally, like via Android Auto, with pending intents. Notifying is done via an Android notification, and the messaging information is provided with the messaging style. The mark is read, and reply pending intents are wrapped in actions and both provided in the notification as well. Note here that the reply action has a remote input that's added that acts as a sort of input field for the reply. And that's the messaging app's architecture. Moving on to the other side of the notification, we can see how Android Auto leverages these objects. Android Auto will first post an in-car notification, and once tapped on, will read aloud the messages contained within. The mark is read pending intent is then fired. The user is given the choice to respond, and if taken, a transcription of that response is set in that remote input. The reply pending intent is then fired. And that's the entire Android Auto flow, so let's see how we can put that into code. First, the app needs to declare support for Android Auto. To do that, it needs to create a new XML file that's linked in the Android manifest. This XML file says that it has notifications that Android Auto should take a look at. Note that for messaging apps that support SMS, MMS, or RCS, this uses SMS bit also needs to be added. So now Android Auto is taking a look at our messages. We can build up the messaging style. So we can't really have a conversation without people, so the first person we have to add is the user of the device. To do that, we create this new person object. Person is used to set things like the user's name, their icon, and a unique key in the event that multiple people have the same name. 
So we create this device user, and we create the messaging style with it. We can then add our conversation information. So I'm from Seattle, and I love skiing, so I'm setting the conversation title to ski group. Um, because this, I'm taking multiple friends, this is a group conversation, so the messaging app needs to set it as such. Note here that conversation title and whether or not the conversation is a group can be set independently. This is new in Android P and has been backported to older Android versions in the Compat library. And finally, we can add all the messages in this conversation in the order they were received. In this case, my friend wants to coordinate breakfast, so the messaging app provides the text, the timestamp, and the sender in the form of a person. With this conversation set up, it's time to add the actions. For the reply action, we instantiate an action builder and set the semantic action to semantic action reply. That must also tell the OS that firing the reply pending intent won't show any extra UI. This is especially important in Android Auto because we don't want to be distracting drivers with extra pop-ups. Finally, the reply action is supplied with that remote input I talked about earlier. On the Marcus Red side, things are done about the same way. This time, the semantic action is set to semantic action Marcus Red, and again, we tell the OS that firing that pending intent won't show extra UI. Note here that the mark is read uh, action does not need a remote input. So that's all three pieces. The notification can now be built. For reference, here are the three elements we created. Messaging style, which holds all our conversation information, our reply action, and our mark is read action. To build the notification, some boilerplate is provided, and then we set the messaging style. We can then add our actions. Here is where the messaging app has some options. Note that the reply action is added as a regular visible action, and the mark is red action is added as invisible. This is purely stylistic. One can add both actions as visible or invisible. This will just change how it shows up in the mobile UI. On Android Auto, actions are never shown, but Android Auto will be able to read both visible and invisible actions. And finally, the messaging app can post the notification. And there we have it. My friends and I have planned breakfast on the road, and our ski trip is underway. And now that we've coordinated with everybody, let's find something to listen to on the drive out to the mountains. Media in the car is one of our core user experiences, and getting drivers access to their content should be front and center. I'm going to talk about several new features we're introducing today to enhance the abilities of media apps to provide content within Android Auto. In particular, we want to make content more visually pleasing by adding additional content style hints and enabling additional search results provided by the app. To start off, let's go over the architecture that an app has when communicating with Android Auto. The first thing a media app needs is a media browser service. It provides a tree of playable and browsable items. Browsable items are basically folders to organize app content instead of returning a giant list of playable items. The media apps implement the onload children method, which loads a particular level of the tree. Here, in our first call to onload children, our example service would return home, recently played, recommended, and playlists. Now, since this is running in a car, we recommend that media apps only provide two levels in the tree to avoid uh, distracting drivers and making them click through multiple levels while they're driving. Now, once a user has picked something playable from the browse tree, the media session service is used to start playing music and to provide metadata and controls to show what's currently playing. For example, our media app that we're showing here supports play pause, skip forward, and skip back. And we show that in the Android Auto UI. There's also the ability for media apps to provide their own custom actions, maybe something like 30-second skip. Now, obviously, we want to get the user away from touching or doing things while they're driving. So we bring in the assistant. You might say something like, hey, Google, play my ski jams. The Google Assistant performs speech recognition and can request that the media session service play the query and music starts playing. We're going to take it one step farther today. We're given the ability for media apps to implement an additional function on the media browse service on search and 
once the music has started playing from a Google Assistant query, we'll provide that query to the media app, and they can provide additional results. Here in this case, the media app provided a ski trip playlist from this year, as well as one from last year. So let's take a look at the code needed to make this happen. For apps which already support Android Auto, this should look pretty familiar. This is the onSearch method. It takes the query string, an extras bundle, and a result object, which the app fills in and sends back to Android Auto. First off, apps should return an empty list if they get a query they don't support. Second, for queries that can't be answered synchronously, apps detach from the results object, and that lets the media framework know that not to wait and not to send anything back to Android Auto right away. This gives a chance for apps to do extra work on a background thread before sending the results to Android Auto. And finally, when the results are ready, they can send the result and the result object, and Android Auto will be notified and show the results on screen. Now, all these the code snippets come from the Universal Music Player, an open source media app published by Google on GitHub. It can be easily cloned, compiled, and used as a great reference building your own media app. So voila, our media app returns the list of items from the Ski Jams query. Notice it returned two playlists and an album. It'd be really nice if Android Auto could group those items and show them to the user as a groups. Fortunately, we're introducing a way to do that in the on-search results. Here's an example function which your media app might use to convert from an internal representation of a media item into the media browser compat media item that Android Auto needs. We can annotate items with a category extra, and Android Auto will group any adjacent items with the same category and show a heading. For the two ski trip playlists, we can annotate with playlists, and Android Auto will group them together and add the heading for you. We're also adding some additional annotations on media items that would be really useful on our trip. For example, I may be heading out to the mountains with my family. I worry that maybe a song comes on that has some explicit content. We now add the ability to say, OK, this particular playlist or song has explicit content, and Android Auto can show that in the UI. Similarly, out in the mountains, I might not have great bandwidth. I'd love to know if the playlist or songs have already been downloaded, or maybe I don't want to burn my data on music that I'm playing. We can also annotate with whether or not media items have been downloaded and are already on the device. Great. Looks like the Ski Trip 2018. It's already downloaded. Doesn't have any explicit contest content. Great choice for my trip out to the mountains. There's one more function that needs updating. The media browser service on get root is called when a media app is first connected to by Android Auto. In order for search and for the additional styling hints to be enabled, you'll need to add a couple of extras to let Android Auto know that you support those features. As I mentioned, we're introducing the concept of additional content styling, and Android Auto will be interpreting the browse tree returned by apps in a much more visually pleasing way. By default, items which are browsable, like folders, will be interpreted as lists. This is how we do things today. But for playable items, things like songs or albums or playlists, we're going to be showing them now as grids. Most of these items have much richer uh, visual content that users can identify by seeing much easier than reading and much safer when you're in the car. There are, however, times when a list is better than a grid. For example, in a podcast app, each of the individual podcasts would probably have individual art that is much more visually representative, while the episodes, instead, they would have all the same art, but different episode titles and lengths and in stat and, uh, status. And it'd be much better to show them as lists. In the on get root function, we can, the media app can provide a hint to Android Auto to say, I prefer my browsable items to be grids and my playable items to be lists, or vice versa. So they have full control over how we're showing the items. I already mentioned the Universal Media Player. I just want to reiterate, it's a great comprehensive sample media app that's available. It gives you a canonical implementation of a media app that actually plays music. And it also supports, it supports Android Auto, 
as well as other surfaces like Wear and Android TV. And if you are developing a media app, I also encourage you to check out the Android Media Controller, another open source app hosted on GitHub. It'll connect to your app's media session and media browse service, and it shows you information that your app is presenting to Android Auto in a clear semantic format. If you're using whitelisting to block apps other than Android Auto from accessing your browse tree, it'd probably be a good idea to either add the media controller to the whitelist or disable the whitelist while testing. So to sum up, we've shown code samples for messaging style, notification actions, providing search results with the media browser service Compat on search, attaching new extras for media items metadata, and declaring support for content browse and search in root hints. So great. Uh, we look forward to seeing all of your messaging and media apps in the car. Rasik and I will be available tomorrow morning at office hours to answer any questions you have about Android Auto. Thank you all for watching. <laughs>